All right, ladies and gents, we got some good old hideout here at 500 elo, and Blue just killed a sheep and then decide. You could tell the villager regretted it, okay? Look at this. He's like, we have to eat to survive, and he justifies it, and he goes up to the sheep, and he's like, we have to, I'm sorry. He kills it, and then he's so disgusted with himself, he can't eat it, then he gets hungry. He's a really beefy, muscular guy. He's got to... He's got to keep that muscle, and then he goes back to eating sheep. Weirdest intro I've ever done, and I also have to sneeze. So, I apologize. Oh, man. It... Come on, sneeze. What are you doing to me, man? Okay, I don't know if I'm actually going to sneeze. We've got Dave Thriller Williams in the blue uh, playing as the Tootins. And then we've got the Bohemians over here on the other side for Imper. Uh, Imper is killing multiple sheep. He's very excited about life and is also making some houses now up against the edge of the walls. The walls here give you a layer of protection. You're also quite far away from the opponent. If you look at the distance, you'd have to travel around the massive wood line that you share. But, but aggression is possible because they're just palisade walls. They're not stone walls. Uh, but it is not always something that you see. So I like hideout because if you want to be aggressive, you have the option. If you want to be defensive, you have the option. It is a good mix of a very closed map like Arena and a very open map maybe like Arabia. But uh, Toons Bohemians, what are you guys thinking here? I mean, right off the bat, I think it's a very close Civ matchup. I would say that Dave Thriller Williams has a much higher ELO with a 60 ELO gap, which is what, four or five wins ahead? Uh, certainly red doesn't know that there is decay on the sheep blue has been trying to eat one sheep at a time so i think blue understands the game a little bit more in that regard the red is just like who cares <laughs> um and that'll hurt red a little bit but we'll see end up seeing what red goes for later on in the game i mean certainly going for monks later on is going to be less justifiable against Tutans because Tutans resist conversion Love the new banner on CA. Uh, which banner? Oh, you mean the ELO banner? Yeah, I think it's pretty good. But I think at a high level, what you would want to go for with Bohemians is you'd want to go for Halberdier and uh, Cannons. Like Hufnitze. And then if you were Teutons, you would want to prep for that and I think get Crenellations in because Crenellations gives Teuton Castles a ton of range. But guys, I look at Blue here and I clearly see a player who's trying to learn some build orders. And a player who understands that one sheep at a time is it's the best thing to work towards. There's a massive message there from Stash. Stash, I can't read all that. Um, he says Lel team games or something else, my friend. Yeah, it's it's a crazy mix. It's a crazy mix. It's hard to find a balance. Here we have auto scout v auto scout, just casually scouting the corner. We don't have any of that hyper focus, that hyper aggression of hey. Let's scout the wall. Let's see where they are. Let's think about being aggressive. No, it's more like, hey, let's click that button. And let's just try and keep our town center working. And I don't know, maybe chop every single straggler tree. Because if T90 watches, that'll bother him. Really curious if Red's going to take a boar. Okay, yeah, Red's going to take the boar. Ran off into the darkness. Red gets the hit. Red runs back. We have the villagers on the boar. And the garrison, maybe? Oh, no. That's the most painful spot for a boar to die. <laughs> oh, sad times. Oh, another one. He's like, the first one wasn't good enough. I want all the meat. And, uh, well, okay. I would actually say that this boar is better than this boar. Uh, and they're going to share them. It's just always awkward when you want to have full saturation around a boar on that side of the TC. When you're under here, you can you throw the food up. You know what I mean? When you drop off the food when you're underneath it, you're somehow like tossing the food up. Your villager doesn't have to walk. I don't know if there's like a mail chute. You know those sucky things? It's like... And it just sucks the mail up in the mail room. I don't know if it's like that or what. Also, holy houses for Red. Red's making a lot of these things. Still doesn't want to make a lumber camp yet. Or a mill. Just doesn't want to spend the wood on anything. There you go. You've got the mill now. Back over to blue. Again, it seems like blue has build orders down a bit more in terms of when you do when you do which action, but 
at the same time, Red maybe working on that has really struggled to remember to create villagers. And Red is going Feudal Age with 15 villagers. So that's not a lot. Teutons, though, do have very cheap farms. So what Dave Thriller Williams could do is uh, possibly research Horse Collar. These villagers are completely finished with food underneath the TC right now. We've got zero villagers on berries. Also, I don't think Blue spotted these sheep, but they are right next to his wall. They're blending in. They're like, shh, don't tell anyone. <laughs> don't tell anyone we're here. <laughs> so I've actually had games myself where I haven't been able to see the sheep next to a gate. And I, I learned that the hard way. So now I always know to look, right? And I'm more experienced, so I know how many sheep I should normally have, but I don't think Blue knows that. The auto scouts continue to pass each other over here. It's hilarious. And Red... Bro! Imper! I... I get that the low elo logic is that these are quote-unquote free trees, okay? I get that. I understand that. But at the same time, when you get out here, this is so incredibly inefficient. It brings me pain. And okay, yeah, there we go. There we go. We got a lumber camp. Holy cow. Red really trying to clear out these trees. And we'll probably do that eventually. And then we'll focus on the more efficient lumber chopping. I get it. Blue's in Feudal Age, and if I were a beginner, and I saw the opponent was in Feudal Age before I even clicked up, I would immediately freak out. But realistically, Red's position is fine. Oh no, the scout! Dave Thriller Williams with the thrilling move, and he will kill this scout. That's a good move, man. I guess he just looked at the minimap and noticed it, because he was on full-on auto-scout. Then over here, Dave has a villager making an outpost. But yeah, red is fine as long as red goes up to Feudal Age sooner or later. We're going to see five more villagers and then Feudal Age. So it'll be 33 villager eco. The scout obviously dead for red, which does hurt. Red doesn't know where blue is at all and is sending... <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Hold on, rewind. Rewind. So, Outpost is an underrated move in the choke point because there's only two ways they can get to you, right? And this is the most likely way that red would take to get to blue. So, blue makes the Outpost, has the vision, is now going to send the villager to do something. And these villagers are going to walk right past the Outpost. Now, I'm not seeing anything from Blue that really tells me that Blue notices this. Wait, 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 wait. I think Blue noticed, actually. I think the running back there makes me think that maybe Blue is considering fighting. Okay, these villagers encounter a wolf on the hill. This villager is going to drop a tower. So Dave Thriller Williams wants to deny that gold. So he's thinking map control. And now these villagers walk by the outpost, I think for the second time. And don't tell me they're going to... Is he stream cheating? Okay, he doesn't see the tower. I'm very confused. I don't know what Red's plan is here. Red's going to make a barracks there! He, is, he, is he doing it to protect the gold that's now being towered? What are the chances, man? I'm pretty sure the tower will start to attack the barracks. And so then Red will have to make a decision on what you do. Now, if you see a few lage tower... And there's no walls or military around it. You just batter it down with villagers. But if I had to guess, I would say Red doesn't know that. And Red is going to try and make militia. And this is going to bring all sorts of stress to Red. We're going to see some panic here. And Red really wanted to take this gold. Because a lot of low eagle players will want to take the gold outside of their base before the gold in their base. And yeah, there's the militia. Now guys, Teutons, they... um. They get murder holes for free, but that's only in Castle Age. And when I was a beginning player, I thought it was in Feudal Age. And I would continually tower rush people, and I would win. And I'd be like, haha, murder holes. But I was too naive to realize it wasn't because of murder holes. It was just because of the tower rush. And Teutons have a pretty effective tower rush anyways. Yeah, Red's going to take this gold. 
Red has nine more villagers, but blue has the wood upgrade, the farm upgrade, which red is getting now. Also has wheelbarrow. All very important upgrades. And blue says, you know what? I've took I've taken enough map control with the tower. I'm now going to go for the Palisades. Yeah, I am doing a live game. Uh, Lucky Gator just likes to make jokes that I'm doing a rerun every single time. And I thought he was serious until yesterday. I realized that he was trolling yesterday. So we're, we're good. <laughs> this is live, yes. Um. Okay, so Man-at-Arms now coming in to upgrade these two militia. We now have more gold being mined outside the base and gold being mined inside the base. Bohemians get the mining upgrades for free, guys. A few late mining upgrade is already in for red. And we are now getting armor and attack. All because of one tower that is completely unprotected that could actually be battered down by one villager. But towers are scary. Towers are very scary. So scary, in fact, that red says this is not enough. I've got to make two stables because that tower could mean 20 towers behind this for all I know. We'll see if he actually produces from the stables. Bohemians do not have very good stable options. I actually googled Blue's name before joining and I couldn't really find anything. Uh, you know, I'm... I was a rather sheltered child, so there's a lot of movies and shows and books that I never like read or watched. So occasionally there'll be something, I'll bring it up. And you guys would be like, how do you not know that? You know, and so I actually Googled this <laughs> because it sounded like something that would be in a show. And I did not really find much. Really well-placed farms for red, I have to say. Blue not doing too bad in that regard either. And so now we're going to see archer range. I assume it's going to be two for red because that just makes sense. Two barracks, two stables, two archer ranges. It's 31 villagers versus 29. I will show the meme because I haven't shown it yet today, and you guys really want to see it. Red wasn't really creating villagers when controlling the man-at-arms, and this is something that happens a lot. And it's going to be a painful time for Red if he forgets about that completely. Now, what's funny is Red tried to click the man-at-arms over here, I'm pretty sure. So look at them go. I'm pretty sure he tried to click to the south corner or wherever he thinks the enemy is, but there was a wall, and now he sees the wall. So now he's like, oh, where are my units at? And they're still going around. <laughs> and Blue's attacking these villagers. This is a very big moment in the game because Blue could kill both of those, but Red reacts, and Red will end up killing that scout, which then means that Blue won't know about the man-at-arms looping. Are they looping? Oh, nope, they're coming back. Yeah, so it was a pathing issue. It was a pathing issue like we thought. Red also did make scouts, as I expected. And we're now going to see archers from Blue over top of the walls. This is... This is really good strategy from Blue. Go forward, get some walls down, get a tower down, and then just go focus on your economy. And now he's got archers from the other side of the wall. And I think Red is going to be really frustrated. And now the Man-at-Arms are going to travel all the way around again, which is what they were originally doing. And they just can't make up their minds. Now, what you could do if you're Red is you could finish this archery range, and then you could make ranged units to fire over top of the walls. But by then, Blue might be in the next stage, and Blue could always open up the walls and maybe go for, like, a stable or something. I think Blue's looking for a gate, by the way. If I had to guess, he's looking in the pages of things to build... Okay, he's going to make a house instead. Here go the man-at-arms. They're on the way. Remember that red, as we see stone walls over here, red has not actually located the enemy at all yet. So we are 23 minutes into the game. He does not even know where the enemy's at. Obviously doesn't know what the enemy's going to do from here. Red's vil count, though, is fine. I, I think... While Red seems to struggle with knowing what to do at times and has definitely overreacted to that tower, I think strategically Red seems fine. Red needs to freaking chill with the military buildings, though. <laughs> Red, you should play Arabia, man. You should play a more open map. I'm not sure about this closed stuff. 
double barracks, four stables, two archer ranges. Three actually, but he hasn't built that one yet. Man, I'm a little sad. I'm a little sad that these man-at-arms have not continued over to Blue's base because that would force some type of reaction from Blue. Now, guys, does Blue know that you can delete your own stuff? That is a problem with some low eagle players. They don't know that you can delete things that you build. Because he's just sitting here. I feel like if he knew, he could be like, bam, let's upgrade these units and run in. I don't know if that's common knowledge at low elo. I was thinking a gate, you know, which would allow you to pass through if he didn't know that. Blue arrives to Castle Age and has insane resources, but what's the plan? I think Blue is going to try and secure the other side now. And yeah, he's going to place walls here. Oh, there's already walls for Red. Can you imagine if Red sent his units in? Red has... Let's let's count. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine military buildings. That's a lot. Also, going to go for outposts over here to see over top of the wall, which I really like. Here you have Blue still sitting next to the wall in the outpost, which I really like. You can actually see the scouts too, which you know what? I really like. Um... If you're not being aggressive, ideally, you expand that economy here. And we are seeing some eco upgrades right now for blue. Maybe it'd be good to get a monastery up to get some relics. Maybe a second town center. Still hasn't found the sheep, by the way. Which is hilarious to me. And red is continuing to build houses all along the palisade walls. Is finally close to clicking up the castle. It just really needs to click it. And we are going to see the food in five, four, three, two, one. There you go. Go up to castle. Age. Boom. Nice job, Red. Now, Red can see this, right? It, it, it's the same thing applies. If you knew that you could delete stuff, or even just making a gate here would allow you to actually attack. Both players have made the mistake, though. Red loves double anything. Look, two military buildings at a time, two scouts, two skirms and groups. Yeah, you're you're not wrong. More like four of everything. <laughs> two groups of two. <laughs> I mean, Red Red just likes to build stuff. It's just a question of will Blue have a commitment towards one thing that can be a mix? Because you know, look, two barracks. Cuz the AI way of making a bunch of units, but having them all be different, is a little tricky. And we have the skirms over top the walls. Blue runs away, and Blue's probably terrified. Like, oh, we angered the wrong player. But yeah, so so here's the deal. So like, let's say you have like five pikemen, five long swords, five skirmishers, right? That's fifteen units. Ten knights psh, destroys that. 10 or 15 crossbows psh, destroys that if if a unit is selected like a crossbow or a knight any gold unit typically that has upgrades it will destroy a mix and usually you know um it is a bit more complicated than that also these skirmishers are blocking the wall and red has now moved out of the way i'm just not sure uh as blue makes a town center which is very much in the center of all these golds i'm just not sure what Blue's plan is here. Because Blue was in Castle Age for a long time. And this Town Center took a long time. That's one of the big bonuses of getting to the Castle Age. I feel like he feels a little bested in terms of the map control right now. And we are going to see a castle here. A castle from Imper. I love that. It's a very good decision. Could lose this villager though. Okay. Yeah. Oh my god. Wait, what? <laughs> Wait. <laughs> uh, <laughs> guys, I think we just witnessed a heart attack. <laughs> what happened here? I think he tried to delete the tower foundation, but he accidentally... <laughs> okay, hold on one sec. This is what I think happened. <laughs> I need a moment. <laughs> okay, so I think... 
He has the villagers selected, right? Right about... Okay, he has the villagers selected. And he tells the villager, <laughs> Hey, <laughs> you go... <laughs> You go build that tower. And then he sees the castle and he's like, oh crap, that's a bad idea. And he thinks to delete the tower foundation and he either A, forgets to select the tower foundation and still has the villager selected and deletes it, or he accidentally click, he like misclicks and he clicks the grass. So he still has the villager selected and then he deletes the villager. <laughs> oh man. Oh, that's so sad. Or maybe he felt bad about killing the villager here and said, you know what, we've got to even it out. But anyways, um, he does delete the tower foundation now, so I think that confirms our point. He now knows pressure could come in. He's got this villager over here. He's he's heard about the deleted villager, and he's like, just give me a job, please. I promise. I'll be good. And now this is a perfect opportunity, if you're in Blue's position, to drop your own castle next to all this fast and go right up to the imperial age that'd be so good you've got the resources for it blue you could go right into it a little treb war you have no other real plan the archers and the pikemen they're not doing much for you it's just a thought meanwhile red red very much plays like an ai if you were to team up with the medium ai you might actually get imper because we got a variety of different units we have a variety of technologies like does that affect red right now does this very helpful for red not really but red's gonna get the tech anyways red puts a lot of thought into his base so i don't want to take anything away from emperor emperor is a very satisfying player prioritizing most of the golden stone outside the walls first four by four by four with the buildings here tc in the north which is to expand the economy i guess the walling, the castle position, everything. These villagers, this is actually the, the funeral. And he didn't have many friends. He was kind of a jerk. Yeah. And uh, only three people showed up. They're all like estranged family members that felt like they had to be here, you know. But they're not really... They're not really interested in being here. Um, but yeah, there they are. You can see him sinking into the ground. And they're just trying to remember the good moments. And they're like, you know what? Okay, let's go build a castle now. And that is kind of what I meant. Now, that's very far forward. But it's not like Red is breaking through here. And this, to me, feels like a Trebor incoming. And I think either player could resign if they were to lose the Trebor. Okay, we have a TC for Red here. So it'll be three TCs for Red. We also have House Walls for Blue on this side. Blue's starting to get the Relics now. There's one more on this side. Red would be able to get three on the other side. Did anyone see Red get fervor? I don't think it's actually come in yet, but uh, if he knew that fervor affects Bohemian villagers, he'd probably research that. But just producing a bunch of villagers right now. Look at this. We've got how many villas in queue over here? Ten? Yeah, ten villagers over here. Uh, he's now using his castle to shoot down the palisade walls from blue. But he will also see blue's making a castle. And again, if blue goes imp, this gets very interesting. Because red is investing into a lot more vills and hasn't had as much food eco the whole game. He's going to fix that. But, you know, you're spending hundreds of resources on villagers. Come on, Dave Thriller Williams, I know you had your problems here, okay? I know you accidentally deleted a villager. It wasn't actually a heart attack. I get it. But there is a clear must-do in this situation. You've got two castles staring each other in the face. You have enough resources to last you for the rest of your life. There is a clear choice here, my friend. And I'm not going to say it again. Because I'm going to wait for you to figure it out. Obviously, he's playing the game and we're a couple minutes behind live time. But Dave. David. The Thriller. Come on. <laughs> Can we get to go up to Wimp, please? Can we go up to Wimp, please? Hey, hey, hey. There we go. I had to say it. I couldn't even hold myself back. There he goes. On the way to Imp. This CC produces some villagers. We also have a castle on this side. I think he's come over here to try and take this relic. 
And he will find that it's walled up. And look at Imper. Imper's going to drop another castle over here. And guys, this is the big problem right now, I'd say, for, um, for Red. Is that Red is starting to spend a lot of food and gold on things that are not relevant to the situation right now. And a good example of that earlier was the second armor upgrade for range units. How did that help you? That's, what is that, 150 food, 150 gold? Now crossbow, 125 food, 75 gold. That's the difference between maybe being imp or not being imp. And I prefer blue's position right now. Blue will have a castle up on both sides. Blue will be able to make trebs. And I think red's response to whatever is going to happen is going to be devastated by Teutonic Knights. Because you know what Red's going to do, right? Red's going to do just what the AI would do and make a mix of everything. We're going to see a bunch of pikes, a bunch of skirms, and a bunch of light cap, maybe some knights. And you know what shreds a mix of trash units? Teutonic Knights. And there's a lot of eco for blue to make them. Imper is not in the Imperial Age in the game, no. However, uh, with the name, yes. Relic number two here for Imper. These monks are going to take a break. There is another relic over on this side. Also, is Imper tasking his castle to fire on these walls? It feels like he's doing that manually. Because it didn't automatically start firing before. So I think he's like shift clicking the castle to shoot the palisade walls. Okay, we have wood being sold. We have food being purchased. We need more wood to be sold here maybe if you're imper there it is an imper is now an imper and is on the way to imp hmm when you attack one it takes out all the others in range okay interesting interesting i actually i didn't know that a fortified wall is a really good choice uh we have three trebuchets elite teutonic knight and then another trebuchet here for blue so blue as long as he doesn't gar un garrison his trebs into the castle fire. We'll take out the castle there. For red. Red just... Going to struggle. I mean, there's no other way to say it. Blue is going to save those trebs for now. We have murder holes! Murder holes on the way. And then masonry and then ballistics. All good technologies. Bohemians can also research chemistry in the castle age. But it doesn't look like that's going to happen. Um... I, I just don't think Bohemians are a great sieve to mix in trash. They're just not a great trash sieve. They, they are good with halbs, don't get me wrong. But like, okay, I guess actually now that I think about it, halb skirm isn't the worst with them. But more than anything, Tootens shred trash. I don't know if you ever want to be making a mix of, of counter units like skirms and halberdiers against the Teutonic Knight. You would need hand cannons or arbalest. Both of which you can make with the Bohemians, but I don't know if Red knows that. <laughs> Blue has heard me say, don't trickle trap, and is waiting for four trebs. In this situation, there's no way that the enemy could ever take out your trebs. So I would have actually been okay with the trebs being out this whole time. Uh, but it still should take the castle out, no problem. And we have another castle behind this for red. And yep, there are the trebs. And red's castle will go down right away. More buildings over here for red. Red planning for the long haul. And uh, we'll also see this castle. Red, I'd love to see him make trebs from this one. Treadmill crane now, so he builds faster. And still no chemistry. And look, he started to make Hussite wagons and said, Ooh, I need to cancel that. That's not good. It's interesting he canceled all of them. I wonder if he knows that if you were to lose the castle as the units are in queue, you get the resources back. Selling wood now for gold. Not a great sign. Cavalier. I, I just, I don't think Imper knows his civilization. Elite Teutonic Knight will just shred everything. It won't even be close. What's the KD? 5 to 2 right now? That's going to change so much. Blue could break down these walls. Also, blue has full upgrades. Blue has full defense, full armor. 
combined with having elite Teutonic Knight, and we'll have two castles here, maybe even more. Nine men at arms, nine skirms, soon to be eight knights, two light cav, two monks, five wagons, just a big old mix. Red says, I don't know what to do. I don't know what the answer is, so I'll make a little bit of everything. Remember, Bohemians, they don't get bloodlines, which is a very big thing when it comes to your stable units. They also don't get the final armor. And even if you got those things, Teutonic Knights wreck anything that's melee or trash. So they wreck skirms, basically, and any other melee unit. More buildings over here. Houses over here for red. Red also spaces the houses so so nicely, you know? Houses that you'd want to live in. So you can move within your town. Instead of being so cramped. 102 population versus 114 population. However, the army is much stronger for blue. We just haven't seen him use it yet. We have another castle. Now, I feel like Hussite Wagon should be pretty decent. I think that's the best unit out there. I don't know if he has enough of them. But Hussite Wagons are gunpowder. And they're siege, too. So he's actually getting siege engineers. Still no chemistry, which is kind of funny. He's getting everything except chemistry. Does he have it and I miss something? He sees the stables going up. He doesn't like it. Not the sneakiest stable ever from Blue. And Blue runs back. And Red decides to back away now. We'll lose a lot to the trebuchets and the castle fire if he stays here. <laughs> there you go, Treb skill cavalier. Red backs away. Treb as well. Albert Deer now. So I, that's a that's a good reactionary move from Blue. Blue sees cavalier and says, "I'll make halves." Again, I don't know if it's necessary for Teutonic Knights, but it's definitely not bad. Yeah, Scorpions would be good, but you know what would be even better? Hand Cannons. And Red has researched, like, literally every university technology except chemistry. So maybe he just, he probably doesn't know. Again, I don't think he knows Bohemians, because if one of the first things that you look for at the tech tree is the fact that you can research chemistry an age earlier. He does have... I mean, some of these technologies are going to be really nice. Like, for Blue, Blue's castle only has 4,800 HP. Whereas it's almost 6,000 over here for Red. Definitely a situation here, though, where you don't trickle trap if you're Red. You need to... Now that the, the uh, battlefield has opened up, you need to wait until you have four at least. Or at least make sure that you know you're going to win that fight. Because when it starts... You do not want to lose the fight and also lose your trebs and not take out the castle. Maybe Red doesn't like chemistry in high school. I didn't like chemistry in high school. Chemistry sucked, man. Chemistry sucked. My teacher wasn't the best. Uh, but also, I was an awful student and I, I also hated chemistry. So it was a bad combination. That's true. Red does get all technologies, it seems like. Or at least we'll eventually build up towards that. So... Yeah, maybe we'll see it. Crenellation's in for blue. But, you know, blue has been doing an awful lot of waiting for a player who I thought is in the better position. And as this castle's going up, you will now see trebuchets here. And that castle could go right down. Blue also with a monk and some Teutonic Knights here. Would have loved to have seen red treb that. And okay, now blue is pushing forward. Okay, so this is where it gets crazy. Like we said, I do think blue will lose this castle. We'll see if red wants to run out and try and take out those trebs there. This is a good game, guys. This is a really good game. I'm worried for red because two ton of knights are just so good here. Like, I don't think blue even knows how good these units are in these situations. He just remembers them from when he was a kid or something. Oh, man. Trebs. Trebs from blue. There's actually five of them here. And somehow, I guess it's actually good for him that his trebs are all stacked in the same spot. I don't know how blue's trebs are so accurate right now. Oh, are you ready for this? Watch this. Blue is gonna hop out of the castles and surprise the enemy. 
He's going to hop out of the castles, and he's going to defend his trebs. He's losing his trebuchets. He's going to hop out of the castles because two tonic knights are awesome. He's going to hop out of the castles. Red's like, wait, another one? Okay, there you go. Blue did not hop out of the castles. And now that looks pretty bad. The red may be growing in confidence here. I don't know what the plan was. Blue says, let's make five more trebuchets. That was kind of funny. It was like... <laughs> It was like, um, you ever get one of those presents where you open a box and in that box is another box and then in the next box is the next box? You ever do that before? <laughs> That's kind of what the Trebs reminded me of. It was a never-ending line of Trebs. Blue, you do know that you're starting to lose rounds here, right? <laughs> I mean, you've got to fight. <laughs> you've got to fight, my friend. He's got the the best unit, man. He would wreck everything here. Wouldn't even be close. I mean, I do think the wagons will help, but still. Blue. Your name has Thriller in it. Okay, all right. What got him to fight? He might have forgotten he had him, to be honest. Because he instantly moved them forward upon seeing them after losing the castle. So, uh, anyways, here come the Teutonic Knights. Just look at how little damage these things take. This is up against Cav, up against Gunpowder, up against Skirms. Just watch these things feast. It's insane. Obviously, Red missing a few upgrades here or there, which doesn't help. But Teutonic Knights are no joke. And yeah, the best unit here is going to be the Hussite Wagons. Now, I just don't know if Red is going to know that. And I don't know if Blue is going to leave this fight thinking that was a victory for me. That was a very good fight. For a unit that, that, that is that slow, it was a really solid fight. And now Chemistry's on the way. Okay, the Treb battle continues over the wall that Red built. Blue now making another castle. You still have the complete other side to worry about. The Man-at-Arms are guarding that. They're guarding the wall. All the focus is here. The Teutonic Knights go in for the Trebs. Even if you just go in and take the Trebs here, I think you're happy with this if you're blue. I think that's what blue should be doing. Taking out the Trebuchets is key. But he wants to take out the Wagons. I mean, still, should be a pretty good fight. But you know what? Say what you want about red, but red continually produces units here. Skirm's always in queue. Cavalier, for the most part, in queue. And that brings you back to what we had said was good about red in the production. Not seeing a lot of tech switching for blue. Blue seems very stuck. Blue seems very slow. We have Wagenberg Tactics, which will actually increase the uh, speed of all the gunpowder. And now the next time red goes to make skirms, will he see the hand cannons in there? Because you know he'll, like, he'll look at the buildings at different times, right? So he surely is going to look here again. Now the chemistry's in. If he starts to make hand cannons, it could be amazing. And Blue, you've got so many resources. You could have Siege on your Paladin. So much. I like how Red just got Sappers. Red is playing this game like so many of us used to play or still do play against bots. Where you're just not satisfied unless you've researched every single technology in the game. And, and Red clearly doesn't even know that much about the technologies. But Red just needs to research it. Feels compelled. To research everything and now i'm starting to think like the only research is that red is missing is maybe bracer we now have arbalest out of the range too so we could always make that um doesn't have bracer out of the blacksmith he has most university techs and i think it's just the monk text that he's missing and then also i guess out of the siege workshop if he makes one he could get who needs say which is unique to the bohemians Okay, Blue is making a ton of Bombard Cannons, a ton of Teutonic Knights, and is, is oh my god, this is going to be a crazy fight. Look how many Cannons he has, and look how many Cannons he has in Q. Also, I'm not really sure, unless we see Gunpowder or Arbalest, I'm not really sure we need to see that, uh, sorry, much more than just Teutonic Knights and Bombard Cannons. Okay, so conscription would have really helped. Then we're going to have elite uh, Hussite wagons. 
And now we have some arbs. So arbalests are definitely going to help. Hand cannons would be the better option, but arbalests are still very helpful here. My thing is, though, red's almost capped. So he's going to have maybe 15 units, which are good against Teutonic Knights. He is going to make the push, though. And we were a little critical of blue for not producing for a while. Blue is certainly going to do that now. Oh, man. This is going to be a doozy of a fight. Bombard Tower Tech. And then keep. Red doesn't even have a single tower. <laughs> I doubt he's going to make a Bombard Tower, but that would actually be really good here. He does have the resources for it, but I just don't think he knows what he's clicking. Or at least he won't have the time to think about it. Oh my god, you can't make it up. Treb's on either side. Blue is retreating now. Okay. Blue's, Blue is going to lose these houses, which actually hurts because Blue is not fully pop-capped to 200. Which I would say is a pretty basic thing you need to get down at this stage. But maybe he's going to hear the little... Or whatever that noise is when you get housed. And that'll get him to act. He will be pop-capped now. He will be pop-capped. Here he comes with the cannons. Okay. These cannons are such a big addition, man. Oh, such a good idea from Blue. This is amazing. And the one thing Red hasn't focused a lot on is taking a look at the Siege Workshop. The entire game, we've gone without seeing a Siege Workshop from Red. The Red's trying to repair. Red's now setting in his units. But look at what the cannons are going to do. And this is against a big ball of arbs. Red needs to back away here. Red does do a good job, though, to save the Trebs. And now lures Blue into the death trap that is between these castles. And we also have the arbs moving right now away, which is good because you want the arbs to be firing. The arbs are the key. And now Blue notices this is a problem, and Blue's going to head out of here. What a game. What a fight. Still, though, it's, it's, it's very awkward for Red to even move in here. And Blue has the hill. So it's one player has got the advantage. The other player has got the advantage. Back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. But four or five trebuchets there. A ton of Bombard Cannons. And the two Tonic Knights to protect. If Blue just brings his uh, units in here in front, I think he'll be okay. It's a little awkward here for Blue, but he does have a lot to lose. And and that, I mean, is a good thing here because he can afford to lose a couple Bombard Cannons and still have a bunch more. Uh, will he take the castle? I think he will. I think he will end up taking that castle. If he takes out the castle, he could also then take out the Trebuchets. I'm not sure if Teutonic Knights are enough on their own now, though. And watch this. So because the Arbalests are still firing, all the siege is left exposed. And we are going to see a whole lot of gold units go down for blue. All of his Bombard Cannons, all of his Trebs are left exposed. More Arbalests on the way for red. He seems to really like those things. Blue still has plenty more where that came from, but what he doesn't have is a big unit queue. He's not producing anything right now. And he also has been working with 30 fewer villagers as well. Wow, man. I'm really proud of Imper because I was really concerned earlier on. He did make towers! What a beast! How dare I imply he didn't know what that is? He did make Bombard Towers on the wood line. Look at that. And he wants to make a castle in the exact same spot. Did he make a castle further forward? No. Further back? No. That's perfect. They already have the rights to that land, I suppose. Guys, this is this is a problem for Blue. I think Blue is completely rattled. I don't know if he knows what to do. He's still... He's trying to get Onagers now. But he's not making Teutonic Knights. So he clearly doesn't feel like that unit's going to be good anymore. And uh, the castle will go down. More siege will go down. And this could be the game. Yeah, it definitely looks like some villagers went down here. Not like Blue really needs wood right now. I mean, he really just needs military. It's going to be very difficult for him to get any significant shots with Onagers when there's Cavalier out there sniping all of the siege. And Dave Thriller Williams, I think, had opportunities here. Certainly had the composition at one point. But this AI army comp, the production buildings from Red, 
and the consistent army Q have been key here. He's got 50 light cap queued up. 50 light cap at low elo. That's pretty sick stuff right there. Every time he would lose the siege, he would add more siege. Anytime he would lose a certain type of unit, he would mix it back in. And he found a really good ratio. But yeah, I don't know if I've ever seen a 500 elo player queue up 50 of one unit before. Unless it was like Militia and Dark Age after supplies. That's like an everyday occurrence. <laughs> Joking, obviously. So I think this is... This is Blue understanding this game is over. And Blue is just going to try and get some juicy onager shots. You can't blame him. It has been a pretty pretty long game. So he's going to hope to get some big shots. At least get some satisfaction out of this experience. Uh, the potential's there. Oh, please. I hope he gets one. Come on. Oh! He's looking at his market. <laughs> I was wrong. But what does gold give you? Oh, it's time for Cavalier now. Yeah. Yeah, the unit that you could have maybe considered earlier when you didn't see any halves. I see. Oh, yep, yep. Okay, here we go. Comeback time. We were losing our entire base. Time to make a full-on tech switch and spend all these resources. Oh, yep, we've got a castle. Okay. Okay. Well, actually, Paladin would have been a really good idea before as well. Um, I had so much faith in the Teutonic Knights, but then Red started to get Arbalest out, and it became a problem. Dude and Paladin, also very strong, but it's just not not really the time to be able to make a tech switch. <laughs> you, uh, you've already lost so much grounds. And in this case, he doesn't have any blacksmith upgrades and armor, which I won't really blame him for because now he's struggling, but... Yeah, there he is. He's, he's selling more resources to get more gold so he can just make more knights. But he's going to lose that castle. He's going to lose the stables. And I think it is time for Dave the Thriller Williams to consider tapping out. He's losing his houses even. He'll lose his market. He'll lose his farms. He'll lose his mill. He'll lose villagers. But he will kill Lightcap. There you go. It's low elo. I'm sure Red is enjoying the experience of killing someone off. But just look at how much he's made. From Cav to like Cavalier to like Cav to Monks to Men at Arms to Skirms to Arbs. He hasn't been able to research every technology. But, you know, you shouldn't really be getting Monk techs here. That would be the, the one area I think he's missing. I thought that was amazing back and forth there for a while. I know that Blue doesn't want to give it up right now, and he's probably dragging this game out because he doesn't want me to put this on YouTube or something, but this game, I felt, was really, really good. The back and forth in the middle, and I think it could have gone either way. And there's the GG from Dave Williams. Calls the GG, and that that's just the, uh, the cherry on top because I'd love to see some respect between the players. You spend a long time playing someone gotta have the respect that you would like to to receive if you end up winning the game so good to see the gg there and imper let's look at his research percentage he researched a lot in this game he did a lot of stuff uh research count look at that 60 percent you have to remember that there's docs which you can't even make that's incorporated into that possible technologies the monastery which has maybe 10 technologies that aren't really relevant i mean he got a lot of technologies there and he benefited from it. Um, and I think what I would say about Blue is there were many points in this game when he had three, four, maybe 5,000 gold. And he wasn't really spending it. And I, I gave this tip a little bit earlier. Let me just go back to one of the fights because I think this will definitely hit YouTube. Okay, so right here. So at this point, he doesn't actually have as many resources because uh, he's queued up so much siege. But even still, right? Right before Blue takes a fight, he has zero units in queue. Before Red takes an engagement, now granted, the engagement came to him here, so maybe not the best example. He's got units in queue. So if you struggle with multitasking and you have a habit of going into fights, losing the fight, and then having to go back to creating more units, before you take this type of fight, 
Max out your queue, okay? Make as much as you can and set the gather point into the fight if you need to. It just makes it so much easier for you. That's what I felt like was the deciding thing. The fact that red always had more units coming out. But I think blue's units for a time were better if you would have just had a little bit of a follow-up with Siege. But still a very entertaining game. Lovely to see some Teutonic Knights even if they lose. I hope some lessons were learned there. It was also really interesting at the start with the tower, the outpost, the walls on both sides. Both players wanted to secure the sides of the map, which I think was good. And shows they understand the strategic aspects of map control on hideout. Also, the economy was better for Red. Red had more wood, food, and gold. Remember, with the faster cast lead, we talked about how maybe Blue could have had the town centers up a bit faster. There was a five-minute difference there. Um, but, you know, it's it's really tough at 500 ELO to, to know. And to see 110 army high, that's not something you see every day. At 560 ELO, or sorry, 500, he's going up now. 110 army is a lot.